First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Welcome to WUFT News First at Five. I'm Ophelia Jacobson. And I'm Kendall Brandt. Thanks for joining us. Republicans in a traditionally blue Florida county are leading the turnout for early voting. That's right. WUFT's Giselle Lee tells us more about how the tables have turned. Thanks, Ophelia and Kendall. After inching forward in the polls for days, Republicans surpassed Democrats in Miami-Dade County early this morning. Despite Democrats and Republicans going back and forth in the polls, a GOP surge like this hasn't happened in decades. The county in traditional, the Democrat stronghold of the state. And Democrats usually perform better than Republicans before Election Day. Governor Ron DeSantis could become the first Republican governor in more than 20 years to win Miami-Dade. With ballots still coming in, Democrats are fighting to keep their heads above water. But political analysts are almost certain that Miami-Dade is making a right turn this election. Thanks, Giselle. Make sure to turn to WUFT for all of your election questions. We have our own online tool to help you find your polling location. To access it, go to WUFT.org. Click on our Florida Votes 2022 story. Then you can click on the link to the precinct lookup tool. Once you're there, you can choose your county and you can also type in your address to find your polling location. Speaking of elections, election day is less than a week away and both political parties are sending their fan favorites on the campaign trails to drum up support. NBC's Drew Patrimo tells us about the final push. Overnight, two of the Democratic Party's most recognizable faces campaigning in key battleground states, President Joe Biden in Florida. It's a choice between two vastly different visions for America. Former President Barack Obama in Nevada. That's why Democrats actually have plans to take on drug companies to lower prices. Shall give them a big Georgia welcome. Meantime, former Republican Vice President Mike Pence stumping in Georgia. We've got a real F. Brian Kemp. Former President Donald Trump will hold a rally in the Sunshine State on Sunday. Both parties deploying heavy hitters to states that will determine control of Congress. In 10 of the most closely watched Senate races, five are currently held by Republicans, five by Democrats. There's one state there for Democrats that looms above all the others just in terms of being a ripe target. It's Pennsylvania. In the Keystone State, polls have Democratic Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman holding onto a slim lead against the Republican, Dr. Mehmet Oz. Nevada looking like Republicans' best chance to flip a seat with a new poll showing a dead heat. On the issues, it's the economy, crime, abortion rights, and threats to democracy driving voters like Tony Figueroa to the polls. I want to, you know, have my own place, you know, to call my own. Been saving up for that for for years now. It just seems with inflation, it that goal just seems a little more out of reach day by day. In your eyes, in this election, it's democracy that's at stake, no? Yes, it is because it's become the truth versus lies. Across the country, candidates trying desperately to convince voters. They have a plan to address these issues, hoping to tip the election in their favor in the final days of the campaign. Well, as election season is heating up, so is the weather, unfortunately. Yeah, it really is. It was kind of chilly this morning, but it really seemed to climb fast as the afternoon went on. So let's check in with WUFT Sean Humphrey, and he joins us now with a weather forecast. Well, there's some scattered showers and thunderstorms across much of north central Florida, not really bothering us here too much in Alachua County, but Levy County and Marion County, especially a little bit west of I-75, kind of seeing those effects from those scattered showers and thunderstorms here at the University of Florida. It's not quite all sky, but those clouds aren't posing too much of a threat to me because they're not opening up and dropping rain drops on my head. It feels nice outside. Well, that's up for debate. 83 degrees feels like 87 with that heat index. And as we look at our evening schedule tonight, temperatures slowly dropping as we get into the latter parts of the night. 78 degrees around 7 p.m. A chance for storms. 67 degrees as we head down, down, down toward those overnight lows. And I'll give you a look at the tropics later on. But for now, back to the desk. Thanks, Sean. Florida's county medical examiners now blame Hurricane Ian for a total of 130 deaths. Lee County is up to 61, and the other recent cases are from Hillsborough, Manatee, and Sarasota counties. 
There were Hurricane Ian deaths in 18 counties across the state, including three in our viewing area in Putnam County. Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz is hearing more victim impact statements before the judge gives him a life sentence. NBC's Tony Pippapone shows us what victims relatives had to say to Cruz directly. You don't know me, but you tried to kill me. I will have a scar on my arm in the memory of you pointing your gun at me ingrained in my brain forever. Teacher Stacy LaPel was at least able to speak to the killer. 17 students and co-workers could not. Megan Petty speaking for her sister, Elena. He gets daily meals, a roof over his head, and a bed to sleep in now. My sister's body is food for carrion. Her roof is six feet of dirt, and her bed is a coffin. This was the day they could tell the killer what they really think and they did not hold back. He is a sociopath that does not deserve to live amongst us. This creature, that creature has no redeemable value. And the other prisoners that you will encounter in your new life will inflict that pain upon you, hopefully 17 times over again, until you're screaming for mercy, just like your victims. When you die, it is my fondest hope that they take you and put and, and, and burn you and take your ashes and throw them in the garbage dump. You know why? Because garbage to garbage. So my hope for you is that you die sooner rather than later. I have no forgiveness in my heart for you. You are a monster with no remorse and every breath you take is a breath wasted. Thank you. Ms. Lapel, I, I know I speak for everyone when I say you, you, you are a hero. Thank you. That's how powerful testimonies from victims and their families. Switching gears to news affecting your wallet, Florida drivers are paying more at the pump as gas prices continue to rise. The cost of a gallon of gas in Florida is up 13 cents compared to one month ago. Throughout the month of October, Florida law reduced the state gas tax by 25.3 cents per gallon. But the gas tax holiday ended on Monday. Now AAA reports Florida gas prices are at an average of $3.39 per gallon. One consumer says he's always searching for the cheapest option for gas. I'm like everybody else out, out, out looking for a deal and uh, on the gas prices and we normally go where we can find the gas prices the lowest. The Florida gas tax holiday was one of 10 tax holidays on various goods implemented by Governor Ron DeSantis this year. You know, there's been a rise in political violence as we get closer to Election Day. Yeah, unfortunately, that is the reality, and this is causing some to take extra precaution this election season. Coming up on WUFT News First at 5, what steps Capitol Hill is taking to protect lawmakers. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. Given the attack on Paul Pelosi, the aftermath of January 6th, and the armed poll watchers in some states, concerns are growing about the safety of elected officials. As CNN's Brian Todd reports, members of Congress struggle to separate angry comments from real threats. An urgent call to fund more security for lawmakers from the head of the police force that protects them. U.S. Capitol Police Chief Thomas Manger saying, quote, today's political climate calls for more resources to provide additional layers of physical security for members of Congress. Manger pledging to keep hiring more officers and expanding cooperation with local law enforcement when members travel. Members of Congress calling for greater protection in the wake of the vicious attack on the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. He went there knowing where she lived, he had a plan, and he intended to carry it out. This was not some random individual, and that should concern all of us. Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell has himself been the recipient of threats, including this one targeting his family in August. Cut his head off. Swalwell's a worthless piece of shit. Cut his wife's head off, cut his kid's head off. The Capitol Police currently don't have the resources to protect the families of congressional leaders, sources tell CNN, or for every member of Congress to get their own security detail in their home districts. Members of Congress were allotted another $10,000 this summer for steps like installing home security. 
not every member may face the same level of threat. You do an assessment and then you provide that level of security based on the risk that's involved. Some members are also using campaign funds to cover their personal security, even hiring private contractors. The Capitol Police opening new bureaus in Florida and California and devoting more resources to analyzing each threat received. But the chief telling lawmakers in January the level of threats to investigate has reached an unprecedented level. I will tell you we're barely keeping our head above water in, for those investigations. We're going to have to nearly double the number of agents that work those um, uh, threat cases. And how to tell which threats are serious. A threat isn't really something that's called into your office. That's just somebody venting in many cases a threat. How do, you, how do you find it? There's certainly a lot of people that are dangerous out there that would not put it on paper. One lawmaker warning that increasing threats could make members less able to do their jobs. Your constituents expect to see you and shake your hands and be able to ask you questions. And, and that's going to become something that members are going to really evaluate uh, very carefully. A House of Representatives candidate is recovering after being attacked this week. Richard Ringer is running for Pennsylvania's 51st district as the House Democratic candidate. He says a man assaulted him outside his home. He hit him over the head and in the face at least 10 times, knocking him out. When he woke up, he had bruises on his face and cuts on his hands. And this is just the latest incident he's dealt with. In the last three weeks, he said people have spray painted messages on his garage door and thrown a brick through a window. Tensions rise as South Korea responds to North Korea's missile launches this morning. South Korea's military fired three air to ground missiles towards their northern border. This comes after North Korea fired at least 23 missiles earlier today. President Yoon Suk Yeol spoke against North Korea's actions, saying there is a price to pay for invoking violence. She ordered the military to be prepared to protect the people's safety and lives. Election Day is just less than a week away. That's so hard to believe, but many of the candidates will be finishing up their rounds and knocking on doors. So let's hope the weather's good for them. Yeah, absolutely. Let's check in with WUFT Sean Humphrey to see if the weather will be on the side of these last minute election efforts. Sean? Well, it should be smooth sailing for us here in North Central Florida, but we're still keeping an eye on the tropics. More after the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. Hurricane season is winding down, but we're not quite finished yet. Hurricanes Lisa and Martin in the Atlantic Basin right now. Neither are expected to pose a threat to Florida, but let's take a look and see exactly what's going on in the tropics right now. We've got an area of development right here. Low chance of development over the next few days, a non tropical low. So as that moves north, we're not going to be calling it a tropical storm, but we will be calling it something to look at uh, in the tropics in general. We've got this storm Martin up here that's not effect not expected to affect land, but it will be something to watch over the next few days as it eventually keeps moving and fizzles out. Let's take a look at this storm down here. Uh, Hurricane Lisa down in Central America. This storm uh, has an eye on the Yucatan Peninsula as it moves forward and it's expected to have dissipated by the time we get into Sunday. Let's bring it local. Let's bring it around town. If you're a SpongeBob fan, you know what I'm talking about and it's not blowing bubbles right now. We're just talking about taking a look at the evening schedule tonight. We've got three areas to look at the chance of storms around 7 p.m., but it's going to be cloudy and mild as the night goes on. Let's take a look at some of those overnight lows right now in Gainesville, 63 degrees, the low expected. And as we look over much of north central Florida, that mid high upper 60s is much of the state, much of this part of the state, but 70 degrees in Daytona and 59 degrees in Perry, the outliers for north central Florida. And if we take a look at our highs, it's also uniform across much of this area of the state, 79 degrees in Daytona, 76 in St. Augustine, but high to mid or low to mid 80s over much of north central Florida. And as we look forward to our six day forecast, it is uh, much uniform over much of the week, 79 degrees, the high on Tuesday. But as we progress, it looks like it's much of the same, not too much to worry about, not a high chance of rain any day, the only chance of rain Tuesday. So it's not too much to worry about all of it. 
uh, high 50s, mid 60s, the lows over the week, uh, not too much change. Back to the desk. Thanks, Sean. Moving on to sports, Gator basketball held its first ever open scrimmage last night. Yeah, that's right, and the team seemed to have plenty of fun showing off their skills at the O-Dome ahead of their season opener next week. Which Gator players shined the brightest in the dunk contest? Find out next on Sports with Christina Santiago. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Welcome to Sports, I'm Christina Santiago. The Gator men's basketball team held its first ever orange and blue scrimmage last night. Fans were able to get their first look at the new head coach Todd Golden squad with just five days until the season opener. Sophomore transfer Will Richard put on a show offensively, scoring 11 of the blue team's 34 points. Jason Jatobo made his return to the court after undergoing eye surgery midway through last season. After the scrimmage, the players showcased their athleticism as they participated in a dunk competition. Alex Fudge attempted a dunk over his 6'10 teammate Alex Simchik, but it was Niles Lane who took home this win with this impressive dunk. Excitement continues to build up as the Gators gear off to tip up the 2022-2023 season next Monday against Stony Brook. The Gator women's basketball team is hosting their first exhibition game tonight against St. Leo University. Fans will have the chance to see several new Gators making their orange and blue debut. The Gators are predicted to finish in seventh in their conference in the latest SEC coaches poll. Tip-off is scheduled for 7 p.m. and the Gators will tip off the regular season this Monday against Florida A&M. Florida football is looking to get back on track following back-to-back -back losses to rivals LSU and Georgia. The Gators are gearing up for a trip to College Station this Saturday for a date with the also struggling 3-5 Texas A&M Aggies. With Florida sitting at 4-4 four four on, this, on this year, these last four games are vital for the team to make a bowl game. The Gators have played in a bowl game 44 consecutive seasons and ending the season on a high note is a goal for this team. Redshirt sophomore cornerback Jaden Hill said that making a bowl game is the standard of this program. You know, that's that's literally like the standard here, like a bowl game, you know. So I feel like um that's that's definitely something that we you know, we we we, we I don't wanna even say expect, but you know, it's more so like, you know, we we we're we're working to get to that most definitely. Kickoff for Saturday's matchup with AM is set for noon from Kyle Field. The high school volleyball regional playoffs continued on last night, and the Santa Fe Raiders are national champs, regional champs once again. Last night, the Raiders swept the Bishop Moore Hornets and have now swept their way through the regional playoffs. The defending state champs won their second straight regional championship in dominant fashion, winning the final set by 11 points. Jalen Stout was a force once again, accounting for 20 of the team's 42 kills. The Raiders' run towards state title continues this Friday in the state semifinals at home against Bishop Kenny. Meanwhile, Oak Hall's season came to an end last night after they lost to Crisis Church Academy in five sets. Union County defeated Ochila Christian last night in four sets and will take on the Baker Gators on the road. Thanks, Christina. Calling all kids, Gainesville dentists are trading money for Halloween candy, and it's all for a good cause. Kids Only Dental Place is hosting its annual candy buyback program to treat local veterans. They partnered up with the Military Support Group of Gainesville to help distribute the candy that they collect. Donations can be dropped off at either of their Gainesville locations. Candy donors are compensated with a small reward for their sweet treats. So the participants are getting a dollar per pound and some of them are choosing to completely just donate it and some others are choosing to go ahead and get that dollar per pound. Kids Only Dental Place will be accepting candy donations through Friday, November 4th. That's just so much fun. That's such an uplifting story and just a great way to give back to the community. Absolutely. It's a pretty sweet deal, but I don't know if my younger self would have donated my candy. I really loved Halloween when I was younger, and I just don't think I would be able to give that away. That's fair. That's fair. But before we go, one last check on the weather. Well, the, weather's the weather does not need to eat a Snickers. It's pretty cool and pretty clear out here in Gainesville tonight. And uh, as we look across Levy County and Marion County, we'll see some scattered showers and thunderstorms. The six-day forecast here in Gainesville showing you uniform temperatures across the board. 
upper 50s and mid to high 60s. The lows for the week and mid to high 80s down to 79 on Tuesday. The highs for the week back to the desk. Beautiful weather ahead. Thank you so much, Sean. BBC World News is next, and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7. But your Florida local news is always on at WUFT.org. Have a great night.